Tank Academy is our new show that is aimed at preparing you to be an effective tank company and Clan Wars player. Your instructor, Klya Neslin, is a veteran tank commander who has trained dozens, if not hundreds, of tankers. As some of you may already know, he regularly publishes his tactics and posts his training videos on the Russian World of Tanks live journal. From now on, you'll be able to get lessons from him here at Wargaming TV. The tips and tactics we'll be discussing will help any player, but especially those players who are branching into coordinated competitive play. The topic of today's episode is perhaps one of the most important basics to master in team play, focusing your fire. The point of focusing your fire on a single enemy tank is to quickly eliminate the target before it can retreat to safety or reload. It requires coordination and discipline to do this as a team. It sounds simple, but it is one of the keys to consistent victory. It applies to tank company battles and clan war battles, and would greatly help the random battles if you could get your allies to work with you. If your team is not focusing fire and you still manage to win, congratulations. But consider yourself lucky. The other team made a critical mistake. It's that important. If you're using this tactic and your enemy isn't, you can easily overcome any local superiority they may have. Luckily, this skill is not especially difficult to learn, but that doesn't mean you should speed through training with your teammates. Take the time to go over it slowly. Make sure each person understands how and why you're developing this tactic. Step 1. To begin with, just go over the basic principles of focusing fire. It should be fairly obvious to most, but remind them that the faster an enemy dies, the less damage they can potentially do. A tank at 2% health does just as much damage as a tank at 100% health. No health, no threat. The target needs to go down. Create a training room with your teammates and split them into even teams on a map like Prohorovka or Malinovka. The place isn't important, but something with a little room and some open space. The thing you'll be going over here is finding the target. You're going to call out targets and your team is going to quickly turn and mark the targets with the T key. Call out the targets by different names, by most health, by least health, by any other thing that might be used to ID a potential target. The other team captain is going to be doing the same thing. Once you've done that for a while, it's time for the real thing. Both teams reposition, and the captains will call out targets one by one. Everyone will fire until the targets are destroyed. The entire time, keep the target symbol above the called out target. All players should be marking the same target repeatedly, within reason try not to spam, and firing until it's gone. You will see an improvement by the time you start the second training. In the second day of training, you'll be having the teams move around instead of sitting still. Keeping the team marker up is really important when the targets are mobile. It's easy to lose track. Here's a tip. You might want to consider rebinding some of your keys like the attack or target button to something like spacebar to make it that much easier to give quick commands while driving. Step 2. The first round of training was pretty easy. All of the targets were motionless. All of the targets should be on the move in this exercise. Just go over what you discussed the day before and remind them that they need to keep firing at the same target until it's destroyed before they move on to the next one. Everything hinges on the captain for each team. They should be calling out the target in voice chat and placing the initial team marker today. Last time they were just calling out the targets and letting the team do the marking. Step 3. After you've run through step 1 and 2 a few times and it's clear that the whole team can fire on a single target without any deviation, then it's time to move on to explaining and learning target priority. As a captain, you won't be able to call out every target, so your teammates need to know what the captain was likely to have called out. Targets are chosen based on a string prioritized characteristics. 
The first characteristic to consider is the amount of time it's going to take to kill the target. HP, how many of your tanks have shots that will penetrate, etc. The second characteristic is the danger potential of the target, damage potential, spotting ability, etc. Keep these two things in mind as you select targets. Target those enemies that have the optimal combination of a short kill time and the most threat potential. If the enemy has no pressing advantage, more guns than you have in the area, then aim at the most dangerous target. Typically, these will be artillery, French tanks with automatic loaders or tank destroyers. If the most dangerous target is behind other tanks, then go ahead and pick the next most dangerous target, because that first target is no longer the best target simply because it's hiding. This battle on Erlenberg is a good example of the tactic. The medium tanks attack in a coordinated group. The formation allows for a concentration of fire. If the players move in such a formation, then they'll be able to destroy enemy tanks more quickly. Again, the captain should be announcing and marking the targets, and relying on the same skills they learned in the first stage of training. Heavy tanks should join the battle after the medium tanks in this scenario. The goal is for the heavies to draw fire from the enemy tanks so the medium tanks have an opportunity to retreat and reload. The heavies should also be concentrating fire. Remember, shoot the target that is both the biggest threat and going to die the fastest. This means picking targets that can be hit by the rest of your team. The simple tactic of focusing your fire will help your team crush the enemy. The final step, using what you've learned so far. Now we'll have your team work in small groups to apply the things they've learned. Break them into platoons with an experienced leader in each group. They'll be calling all the targets. As you can see here, the platoon can easily finish off the T-29, so they choose to ignore the more powerful E-75 for the time being. Now that the E-75 is alone, it won't be able to stand up to the coordinated actions of the platoon. It's forced to fall back and continues to take fire. The team is going to be able to recoup the repair costs from the training they completed earlier. Tier 8 premium tanks are especially good at earning credits when working in a strong platoon. Something to watch out for. This T-34 is making a common mistake. They've closed with the enemy and effectively blocked the shots of their teammates. Only clinch like this when you're not going to be shielding the enemy tank from your allies' fire. Take a look at the teamwork being employed against these two medium tanks. The players should concentrate their fire on the target that will die fastest. In this case, it's the tank with the least hit points, the Type 59. Only once it is destroyed should they turn their attention to the T-54. Here the enemy team is trying to capture the base with two Tier 8 vehicles one out in the open, and one taking cover behind the fountain. The KV-5 is the first target simply because it's completely exposed. Once they clean it up, they can move on to the enemy that was not targetable. There isn't anything mysterious about these tactics. Every soldier on your team should be able to predict the next target, but have the discipline to focus down the one that is called out or marked by the captains first. This is the end of the first Tank Academy lesson. It's now your responsibility to get out there and drill your soldiers. In the next installment, we'll go over the tactics of how to cover your teammates when they're at low hit points. Good luck on the battlefield. Roll it out.